Hi there, welcome to a revision video, which this time is going to focus on price elasticity of supply. So what does elasticity of supply mean and how do we measure it? Well, price elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of a change in quantity supplied to a change in the goods own price. So as with all types of elasticity, it's essentially a measure of responsiveness. Can producers increase their production, for example, when there's an increase in demand? Now, depending on the coefficient we get, which we'll come to in a second, if supply is elastic, then producers can increase or expand their output quite quickly without there being an increase in the cost of production or a significant time delay. In contrast, when supply is inelastic, then businesses find it quite tough to increase their production in a given time period. The formula for measuring price elasticity of supply is the percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. So, depending on the value we get, we can say something about the elasticity of the supply curve. When price elasticity, or PES, is greater than 1, we say that supply is price elastic. In other words, supply is responsive. When price elasticity of supply is less than 1, supply is inelastic. The two extremes are when supply elasticity is 0, i.e. the supply curve is perfectly inelastic, and when the coefficient of elasticity is infinity. And in that situation, we say that supply is perfectly elastic. And we'll have a look at some supply curves which show all of these in the next few slides. So, the key question really is what makes the supply of a product either elastic or inelastic? What are the key factors affecting the price elasticity of supply? In the exam, it's important to think about the nature of the good or the service that's being produced to the market and then apply each of the relevant factors to your answer. I suspect the key one essentially is how much spare capacity there is in the industry. If there's plenty of spare capacity, then it's quite easy for a business to expand output without an increase in the unit cost and therefore supply will be elastic. Supply of goods and services tends to be most elastic in a recession or when an economy is just coming out of recession, uh, when there's plenty of spare labour and capital resources. Second factor, which is important, is the level of stocks of finished products and also component parts. And the basic uh, rule here is that if stocks of raw materials and finished goods are at a high level, then the firm can quite easily respond to a change in demand. Supply will be price elastic. Uh, conversely, when stocks are low, uh, dwindling supplies oftentimes force prices higher because of scarcity. The costs of storage have to be borne in mind here. Uh, perishable goods are often harder and certainly more costly to store. A third factor, which is important in determining price elasticity of supply, is the ease and cost of factor substitution or factor mobility. So what does this mean? Well, the key to it is to understand the idea of occupational mobility. Can we use labour and capital to produce different things? The elasticity of supply of a product will be higher if capital and labour can be easily switched. So, for example, the printing press could be switched fairly easily and quickly between printing magazines and greetings cards or printing something else, such as posters. Okay, it could be the case, for example, that the change in the price of cocoa encourages farmers to switch out of one product into cocoa. The key is whether the land and the resources can be easily transferred. And if they can, uh, then supply will tend to be elastic. The fourth factor, which again is important, is the time period and the production speed. So we find that supply is more elastic the longer the time period that a firm is given to adjust its production levels. And in some agricultural markets, the, we talk about the momentary period, which is a short time period when supply can't be changed. OK, so these are the four main factors that determine the price elasticity of supply. 
let's have a look at some key diagrams to see uh, how you would show these uh, ideas coming into force in, in a question. So in our first diagram on the left hand side here, we've drawn, a, we've drawn an elastic supply curve S1. Uh, you can tell this because the, the linear supply curve would cut the Y axis. We've shifted out demand from D1 to D2. And you can see that it's quite easy to expand output to a new equilibrium quantity Q2 without there being a significant increase in the price. Elasticity of supply there greater than one, it's elastic. And then make a contrast with this supply curve, which is clearly steeper, it's more inelastic, and a, another big increase in demand this time brings about a relatively small increase in quantity, but as you can see, a sizable rise in the equilibrium price. What about our two extremes? Here is a supply curve which is perfectly elastic. This means that a producer can sell any amount extra they need to uh, in response to a change in demand. So demand is shifted out from D1 to D2 and the price will stay the same because the supply curve is essentially constant at, uh, at a given price. So this is a perfectly elastic supply curve and hopefully you can straight away visualise what the other extreme is going to be. Perfectly inelastic, it's going to be a vertical supply curve. So in this situation, demand again is shifted out, D1 to D2, but our producer in this case isn't able to change the quantity they're able to bring to the market. In this sense, supply is fixed, supply cannot respond to the increase in demand, and all you get is an increase in the market price. Here's a, here's a good example of a fixed supply curve in a given time period. This chart shows the stadium capacity for each of the or the main Premier League clubs uh, in 2015 and 2016. And you basically assume that in a given season, the capacity of the stadium is pretty much fixed. Now, depending on who you support, you might argue whether those stadiums will ever be full, uh, particularly, if, if, for example, if you're a Newcastle United supporter. But hopefully you get the idea here that in, this, in a given season, the capacity is uh, the stadium's capacity is fixed. The elasticity of supply, in that sense, is fixed at capacity. Here's a classic exam question. Under what circumstances will market supply be elastic? In other words, the coefficient of elasticity greater than 1 if there's a change in demand. Well, let me give you four things that would help to explain why supply would be elastic. Firstly, it could be the case that the supplier has plenty of spare capacity. Our visual, ex visual example there is the idea of a restaurant which is half empty uh, at uh, certain times of the day. Could be the case that the supplier has a very high level of stock easily available and accessible to bring to market to meet rising demand. It could be there's a very short production time frame to get products to market. Think, for example, of businesses such as Domino's that can literally get a pizza ordered online from the oven to, to you, the customer at the end of the final mile, within, let's say, 35, 40 minutes. The time frame of mass production increasingly gets very short. And finally, the key thing is whether factors of production can be easily switched from one activity to another.